What's up, YouTube? Uh, taking a day off from working at the shop today, even though we got a ton of things that need to get done. But I gotta go pick up that blaster. I've been putting it off for a month and a half with the party prep and everything else, so I am taking a long scenic back roads trip through farm country. Just over the border in Iowa, so got about a three hour drive today in a borrowed truck, so borrowed Dottie's mom's truck instead of mine. I have no doubt mine would have made it out there and back, but it's not the greatest on fuel economy and hauling it all the way across the state with pending weather. I'm not really sure what's going to happen with that. The wipers on that truck do not work all that well. I've driven it in some terrible downstorms, but not ideal for that, and it's filled with a bunch of garbage that I didn't feel like emptying, so it was easier just to jump in this Toyota Tacoma? I think. I don't even know what it is. It's a bigger pickup truck, but the small one by modern standards, early style. But yeah, we got a ton of rain, so everything is flooded out here. Hopefully it's okay once we get over closer to the Mississippi and cross that big old river. But yeah, not too much fun and exciting stuff today, but I'll pick this thing up and then get it loaded, strapped down in here, drive back, and then go over what it's going to look like in the new shop. Started cleaning up all the inflatables and some more of the stuff, so I still don't quite have room to get into the blast room yet, but look at all this water. Everything's flooded. Everything is underwater, so we'll update you guys when we get uh, out there. Well, made it back to the shop. Long day of driving. I then ran to the other shop and got some wheels put back together. Well, we got the fresh pot. Big old Clemco, fully refurbished or restored, so all the fittings are new. All the hoses are new. Brand new hose, brand new twin, twin line, airline, and then Nova helmet. So let me get this all unloaded and we'll take a look when it's on the ground. I just got a call saying people were coming to pick up their bikes that they left from the party. So I was all geared up to start trying to wrestle this thing out by myself. It's not light, it's about 280 pounds, I believe only because we had to lift it and the guy had a forklift but battery died trying to get it fired up so rather than me try and wrestle this out I'm gonna run to the gas station real quick get some sodas come on back and wait for them to pick up their bikes and for what day is it Wednesday three days three and a half days of storage they get to help me carry this out of the truck then we'll go well I guess we can go over the rest of it before I leave uh, the small red hose is for the air helmet over here. It's a it's an older shell, but he completely rebuilt. He had all the parts rebuilt everything for me. So it's brand new inner liner, uh, inner lens and outer lens. And then he gave me a bunch of extras for those, which is awesome. Brand new twin lines, brand new couplers for the, <coughs> excuse me, brand new hose, uh, 50 foot of blast hose. And I think this is 50 feet of airline. I'll probably have to piggyback that and not exactly how I'm gonna run this setup yet. Uh, there's two big air hoses here. One is for the mask. If I choose to run it off the compressor, I think I'm actually gonna plummet. I got a drop for running the electric compressor instead of that, because I don't really have a CO2 monitor and I don't know if I wanna gamble with Breathing in CO2 from the diesel compressor. Uh, plenty of air in there to power everything. And then we have a 7 16 bore blast nozzle. So that is huge. 7 16 tungsten. This should last a pretty long time. With <coughs> the correct fitting in this box. So all of these will go onto that hose. Blast nozzle goes on the end. Twin line connects to the dead man valve that I'm not going to open because I don't have my knife on me. And then we should be good to go. I just got to figure out what I want to do for the compressor. If I want to drill a hole through the wall or go through an existing hole in the wall because there are a plethora of them and run from the compressor to here. And then I just need the blast hose in. So I might be punching a small hole in the back wall right over here of the booth. And then the pressure pot will either go in the booth or sit out here. It would make more sense to keep it in the booth, but lots of things to figure out with that. So let me run back and then I don't know if I have the motivation to start putting all this together yet. So 
Stay tuned. We'll figure out what happens. If this is the end of the video for now, we'll be back tomorrow. Well, it is the next day. Started messing around with some of this. We got it out of the truck, and I don't remember exactly where we left off in that video. I know my buddies were coming to pick up their bikes, so we got all the space in the world again, ish. Still gotta park the actual iron head, the choppers, if you will. We'll get parked, and then Jesse's scooter's up here. So, I didn't really have much time to mess around with this, but I did. Let's go over to the compressor. I was messing around with the diesel compressor yesterday just to make sure everything's good. I still gotta go get more get fuel. I got about five gallons to fill up. It's not empty or anything, but uh, this thing has been working since I got it, but it was a little hard to get fired up. And I was trying to figure out why, but yesterday when I was messing around, I don't know if anybody watched the thermostat video on this, there's a orange wire and a red wire. The red wire has to go to that solenoid on the injector pump. And then I just had an orange wire that was dangling around over there. Um, I hooked that up to, it's a cold start solenoid, uh, cold start advance. <laughs> Leave it to me to say that. Could also be the battery too. Uh, I fired that up, that battery's been sitting there, not charging, not in use for quite a while. So we'll give that one more go, but I hooked that up yesterday with a freshly charged battery, not the one that's in there, but, uh, and it lit up or lit right off perfectly fine, immediately, like three cranks, it was really weird. Not used to that. I usually try and give it a couple primers over here too. I know it shouldn't need it, but you never know. It's not like it's a new compressor by any means. putting off buying a battery for a while. So, maybe I didn't fix it. Seemed like it. I also did have the fresh battery in there, like right off a charger, so maybe that's really all it is. It's not sending enough it's crank speed, who knows. But uh, while we're at it, it's super bright outside, give it a minute to adjust. Um, I started pulling out some of the stuff on here, so it's a Marco brand, uh, Dead Man Valve. Brand new twin line couplers, 716 big boy nozzle. And what I wanted to do was actually open up this. We'll go through and set up the coupler connections on the bottom of that and kind of get this roughly queued up. I'm trying to figure out whether or not I'm gonna leave the pressure pot out here and run the blast hose through or if I'm gonna leave the whole system in there. So I'm gonna have to drill a hole in this wall. So I brought the drill and the hole saws. And then I opened up the glory hole in the wall that went outside from before to the camper. I had it just patched over. It's still uncovered on the other side, but uh, I think we got enough extra little PVC things. I'll jam one of those through there and we'll run the compressor feed line because this comes off the compressor into here perfectly fine. And I do have enough to go through if I put the pressure pot right on that back corner. I think I have enough room to run it to this connection. Unfortunately, I gotta go about three feet up and we'll go through this back corner wall panel and then I can just do a quick connect over here. So let me get some stuff set up over here. And, uh, oh. Could have been a weak ground on that. I was just thinking about that. I threw the battery terminals on. They're not snug down at all. So maybe that was the problem. Maybe not, who knows? One way or another, I know it runs. I know I can get it fired up, just not doing it today. But let me get set up. We'll open this blast hose up and then put the couplers on and then start doing a quick little rough assembly and see what it looks like. Not turning it on, I have nothing to blast. Oh, the whole blast room is filled with a bunch of storage stuff from the party too, so I gotta go through that at some point, but I just want to make sure all the fittings and everything are done on here. So then all it needs is sand and fresh diesel in the compressor. I kept cranking it and did a couple primer squirts. She fired up, took a couple rotations. That battery, that's the original battery that came in it. It needs to be replaced very badly. I think it's like six years old. It's good if I take it off the charger and run it, but I think what I'm going to do is actually piggyback on because I got a bunch of other ones. Um, 
We got a couple of these ones down here that are all new, good to go. So that's where we're at on that one. But she's running and it's kind of warm today. So I want to make sure it's not overheating on me. So that's just going to sit there idling away for uh, the next 45 minutes or so, I think. We'll see. On to the hoses. video I kind of did a quick time lapse of getting all this stuff set up and then testing it and then the camera kind of died at the end but before I do that again so essentially this red and black line I didn't really explain much you have your main feed air supply coming in through the moisture collector from the compressor so this compressor line the red one that's run through here goes into here that's your main feed in open the ball valve it pressurizes everything there's a safety on off valve here this, the red and the black, are your remote control lines. So at the end of the nozzle, basically when this is closed or open like that, it vents air through this little passage down here on the dead man valve. When you pull this valve in and yeah, GoPro does not like it's acting up in the rain. But when you close this, this little rubber ball caps off that little air hole right there, like so, which then pressurizes the system 
to these lines and allows air to bypass through here, up to here, and it opens the pop-up valve. Pull off the filter real quick, right there. So when you pull that trigger, that shoots up and instantly pressurizes the pop. Now, the setup I have on the smaller compressor over at the shop, it'll just kind of run constant air through. There's not enough volume to instantaneously pressurize that. You need at least 50 pounds of air to activate all of that, as far as I'm aware. But before we dig further into this, I'll show you guys kind of how that works before the end of this video. But I do want to go over to the compressor because I finally broke down and bought some gauges. So I got one electronic one and then one mechanical one. I'm not sure which of these two I'm going to use, but I want to go get that set up before I fire the compressor up and everything gets hot. So let me grab some tools and then we'll go over to the compressor and figure out if we can get one of these to install into the thermostat housing or the water. Uh, Jesus, I'm losing my mind. The thermostat housing that's on the side of the motor and then I can kind of run that and actually monitor temps because I've been meaning to put one of those in for a very long time. All right, hopefully we scared all the snakes away, making a little bit of noise because they're everywhere up here. Saw a couple garters banging around yesterday. Need some adhesive glue of some sort to get this sound deadening to stay put up here too. But uh, here's kind of what we're looking at. Here is the thermostat. Hopefully you guys can see down here. But we have a temp sensor here which runs down to, did I have this hooked up right? I still don't know. Come on, get on level ground. All right, so here is our sending unit right now. I have these two wires hooked up to here, which now that I'm looking at this, I don't know if that's proper. I thought that one went there, but there's gotta be one more spot for a ground on here. Red and then orange, because these two are looped. Sounds like a hawk. So these two we gotta figure out. I know for sure the red wire needs to pass through there. Like I said, I thought I had these all figured out, but it is only a two wire circuit. So we have a red and an orange, which red for sure has to come down here. And then I don't know on the other one. This one was just kind of hung out wide open. So I'm still looking for a wiring diagram schematic for that. I thought I had it figured out, but now looking at this, I'm not really sure. But I'm gonna pull this plug up here. What is that? 11 sixteenths maybe? And see if we can get this port open. Oh, no, three quarters. And if we can open up one of these passages. Hopefully I can get a temp sensor in here. I don't know, there shouldn't be too much coolant that comes out, but there will be some. Just like that. It's almost like there was air behind there. Sounded like it. So we'll let that drain a little bit and then I'll grab the temp sensor thing. All right, let me go grab the gauges. So now we're gonna run the temp gauge set up on here. The nice thing is I don't really care about wiring all the lights and stuff. I don't plan on having to use this much at night. Hopefully this is the right thread though. Nope, maybe not. Hmm, let's see what we got here. I got two gauges, so I gotta figure out which one's gonna work or which one has more adapters to work. I don't care about the gauge component yet. We can wait on that, but I do need a various fittings. So, depending on what I have available to me here, we'll kind of determine which one we're gonna install. I might need to grab some adapters or something too, if none of these are the same thread. Hmm. It should be that. Nope, that's too big. Can I have a smaller one? Shit. This is too big. Hmm. Well, that's unfortunate. Looks like it should be this one. 
but this probe is too long. Oh, why is this my life? Let's see here. What if... 3 8 NPT, so 3 8 is too big. come up short today because none of these are the right size. That's unfortunate. What if I tap off of this? It's an electronic sender. So I should only have a couple things here. I don't know. I'm going to mess around with this off camera because I don't really know how to solve this yet. I don't have the right size fittings. So what I need to do is get one of these. That's like a straight, it's not a pipe thread. So I need this size threads, but I think what I'm gonna do is disconnect this connector and pull that lower sensor and see what that lower sending unit uh, thread size is. Back from the hardware store, I got the right fitting here for the electronic sensor. It's a uh, metric thread, which I didn't anticipate, but it is what it is. So I did put that plug back into the bottom here. I'm gonna pop this one back out. And unfortunately, we are going to have to uh, top off a little bit of coolant, but that's not a big deal. So we'll pull out the drain plug that I put back in before I left. The sensor, the factory sensor, this one, the two wire, will go back into the bottom. And then I'll run the external water cooler or water temp gauge one on this upper mount. So there's that. This goes down here, just like it did factory, just like that. And I still, I guess, if anybody does work on these or has a 4045T motor and something and knows where this temp sensor actually goes, I would greatly appreciate it in terms of the wiring on this, but all right. So there's that one. Where did I just put the brand new fitting? Right in front of me. This should thread right in here now. Which it does. Feels fine. We have enough room to get the gauge in. I did put an O-ring on here too. But it's a little bit smaller, so let me go down a size here. Of course, it's metric, so what's the equivalent of 11 sixteenths in metric? 17 or 18? Whew, left my tools out. These are hot. Warm today. I'm back up into the 80s or 90s. Shit. That sucks. I just broke it. It's exactly what I didn't want to do. So that's cool. Just broke the fitting off in there. Son of a bitch. All right. We're going to put this one on pause because. I can't believe I just did that. Maybe I shouldn't have put a three quarter on there to tighten it. Now I gotta drill this brass fitting out. I went from having a compressor to breaking a compressor all in one day. Son of a gun. Real life, these are the problems that happen. I hooked that down too tight apparently. I didn't think I was going that tight on it. Just didn't want it to leak. So let me try and get this fitting out. It'll probably be cursing, so we'll come back when that's out. Broke the head off of that in the housing. However, let's take a big screwdriver here. It's not in there that tight. It's a brass fitting, so that's on me. Should have just left it where it was. But I need an M14 by one and a half. And now, for whatever reason, super convenient. My phone has been losing service all day. And I wouldn't really care all that much on my personal one. It's not the business one, it's just the shop, or my 
personal phone. It's saying SIM card not red, blah, 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 blah. I don't know if it's because it got wet the other day or what. I'm going out of town on Thursday morning to New Orleans. So this not working might be a much bigger issue than I want it to be. So I got that off. I got to get phone service back and then I'm just going to call the auto parts store and have them run me a, another fitting 14 by one and a half. Put that in delicately. Then I can start hooking up the water pump. I didn't bring any electrical connectors here, so I did jerry-rig up the compressor water temp gauge. It's running hot, it's like 220, but uh, while I'm letting that run and doing some diag, I figured I'd kind of come over here and finish up this video, because I'll be messing with the compressor for a while, but that doesn't all need to be on camera. But what we are gonna do is lay this out here. I'm gonna turn the air valve on, which will now pressurize this tank. Then I'll leave you guys like right here-ish. And you can kind of see how that pop-up valve works, I guess. Not that it matters all that much, but we just need an outro. So this is how we're gonna finish this one up. Everything kind of hooked up and working. Got the hoses all hooked up back on here. I got all the safety whips in place. The only thing left is opening the valve on the compressor over there, and then this valve down here, and then we can test that dead man valve. It's gonna be loud. I don't know what you guys are gonna hear. Then if we come in here, you can actually hear the air coming past here. So that block off valve is probably not closing completely. Here's the trigger. Here's the dead man. I'm gonna drop this and get that queued up just so it's ready to push. I'm gonna open this. And you can hear it coming out of this dead man valve now. There's a ton of air coming through here. And if I close this, Pops up. So hopefully you guys can see that. I'll show you on here first. Valve is down. Handle's open. It's bleeding off all the compressor pressure through here. Close. Push. And listen. walk away and then do this one more time. So open, bleeding off pressure, pop up valve on, blasting. Let off, exhaust. And that is all functioning and working as it should and then it closes. So feeling pretty good about that. <clears throat> Let's go see what my temps are at. I'm guessing we're probably at like 240, 235, 240. Way hotter than I want to be, so I don't know. Part of me is kind of leaning towards just doing a water pump on this. For the sake of it. go another five minutes if it creeps up over 240 we're gonna shut it down I mean I'm gonna shut it down pretty quick here anyway but that's kind of where we're at right now I got to figure out why that's not circulating I just popped the radiator cap and ran it open to re-bleed that system topped it off with some water because I over radiated it with coolant and then uh, yeah I mean I got to run it again I was having some issues it was starting up and dying I disconnected one of the bypass switches I don't know which one but I rehooked up the wires. I figured out which one I messed up. So now that's firing up and running, I just gotta get those temps down. So I already did a thermostat. The only thing I didn't do was run it without a thermostat. Well, that was a part, but I do have extra gaskets if I wanna go that route, or do I just pay the couple hundred bucks and throw a fresh water pump in and alleviate one more issue. Um, it is rotating. I had the radiator cap off. It is flowing coolant. Maybe the impellers aren't in the best of shape, but if uh, if it's under 150 bucks, it's cheap insurance just to throw a fresh pump in it. 
I just don't know how we're gonna do that yet. It looks like kind of a pain in the ass. It's tucked up right against that fan shroud for the radiator. And I know that there is something on those to upgrade from the plastic impeller to like a metal one, because those plastic ones wear out over time. I didn't actually look at the fan blades, so that's where we're at. Other than that, we got a pallet of sand coming tomorrow. We're in pretty good shape to get rocking and rolling over here. We got the Nova blast hood set up, waiting on a filter for that. That'll get hooked up to the electric compressor or I can run it off the diesel compressor, but I don't have CO2 monitors, so I'm leaning towards electric for now. So that's the end of this one. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all those fun things. We will be back on actual normal car and motorcycle things soon. And I promise you got your, uh, actually, Ford videos coming up next when I broke down and actually had to tow my truck for the first time. So we'll catch you guys on the next one.